All right, what's up guys? So a ton of you really, really liked uh, the first tier list I did for the ships. Um, and somebody was requesting, or a lot of people actually were requesting to do the weapons in the game as, as well. And I think that's a great idea. You know, the weapons are a pretty divisive topic. Um, whereas with ships, you can kind of swing most of them around to a win. Some of these weapons are, I don't know, man. Some of them are a little bit more stinky than others. But we're going to do a tier list again. This is my opinion. Um, some things I'm going to undervalue, some I'm going to overvalue. But I have hundreds of hours in the game, so I have some sort of authority. Um, and, you know, some of them are, like, good, but just aren't really worth it. It's kind of be kind of the theme for a lot of these weapons, since it's a roguelike where you got to manage your power and, and resources. So it's going to be hard to use some of these weapons or use them efficiently. So with that being said, let's get started. Um, this is a tier list I found made by uh, 645. Did not make it myself, but it is looks pretty good, to be honest. Um, I will say it's in order of weapon types, which is fine, but it means there's going to be a little bit of like bouncing around since some types of weapons are just inherently better than others. <clears throat> but that being said, let's start here. So the mini beam right off the bat is only on ships by default. You can't actually buy it or get it in any sectors. Um, it's pretty bad, but that's kind of the point. Um, it's small. It doesn't do a ton of damage. It doesn't pierce shields as most beams do. Um, having said that, I did win a run with Stealth uh, A on, on my channel here, and it actually, I was surprised. You know, yes, I would have preferred to have literally any other goddamn beam in the game, but Mini Beam did alright. So it can definitely, you know, what a beams excel at is when you get their shields down with whatever other weapons you have, you can get in and do X amount of damage just immediately, right? And the Mini Beam can do 3 to 4, if you're lucky, on the ship layout damage, which is, you know, not bad. So. Having said that, it's still not great. I think I'm going to put it in the C tier. It's easily the worst beam, but again, that's kind of what it's there for. Um, and you can't buy it or get it in events, like I said, so it's it's whatever. It's just a starting weapon. All right, pike beam, I think, is really good. I think most beams are really, really good, but I think the pike beam, pike beam may be on the lower end. It's better than the mini beam, but it doesn't do a lot of damage. Kind of its thing is that it's really really long it has a lot of range which is good but a lot of times it's better to hit a few concentrated systems with the beam to take uh, take them down than hit like a bunch of empty rooms having said that it's still decent i'm gonna put it in b tier um you know i can easily win runs with this if i have it on uh, as part of my build and i, I like it a lot <clears throat> i guess we should go through the tiers s tier is like if you see this in a shop or pick it up absolutely use it must must have it's gonna help you win the game guaranteed a is like really really good like you know there are some better weapons but it's still like you always love to see it b is like you know i'm, I'm happy um you know it's not it's not amazing but it'll it'll definitely get the job done c is like i probably would not use it the whole run but it, it could you know work in a pinch d is like i try to avoid it unless i really really have no other weapons and e is like you just honestly shouldn't even use it here um you know let's change this to f tier sounds a little better so okay cool halberd beam I've said it in my videos, is my favorite weapon in the game. <clears throat> One of them. Probably the most, my favorite, though. Um, it's so good. You know, if you have the capacity to take down enemy shields with lasers, flak, whatever, and you get this thing off, a oh, whole baby, that ship is done for. It does two damage per room hit, which is, like, really good, right? Um... But that also means it pierces one layer of shield. So it has a little wiggle room compared to some other beams like these two. That you can get it through one layer of shields, hit their shields room first, that takes down their shields, and then the rest of the rooms, three or four rooms it hits, it, uh, you know, does a ton of damage. So this thing can ruin ships if you have a good weapon set up to go along with it. It's kind of, we'll get to the glaive beam next, but it's like what, what you want in the glaive beam, you know? Um, the halberd beam is so good. I think it's the best beam for sure. <clears throat> now the glaive beam. This one is going to shock some people, and it's going to be kind of a theme with some of the quote-unquote amazing weapons, right? I think the glaive beam is just a B tier. Yes, it is by numbers the best beam. Obviously, it does insane damage. It has a really good range. Um, but when you really step back and look at it, yes, it's good, but it takes forever to charge, and it takes four power. Excuse me, that's insane. Um, so it's really kind of hard to use um, and fit into a build, you know, in certain situations. If you can fit it in, awesome, right? You have this, you have an ion or two. I mean, that's that's a winning setup right there. 
So again, it's it's B tier, it's still good, but it's really like the halberd beam. I would, if I had the glaive beam and I needed to sell it for the halberd beam, would do it every time. Wouldn't even think about it. I think the halberd beam is going to be so much more worth it uh, in most of your runs. Still good though. You know, I would still definitely use it if I if I can make it work. But the power and the charge time that are required is just difficult. Plus, I mean, four power in and of itself is not that bad. But if you consider having to have other weapons for it to really shine, that's that's a lot of weapon power. Um, a lot of you know taking up space still good but all right whole beam i think i think it's also an a tier i think it's better than the pike beam and the glaive beam um it's kind of like a worse halberd beam it does two damage but only on systemless rooms so um it's a little bit less like universal than the halberd beam i think they have about the same range um it's still really good you know pretty much if i'm going for a gunship run with lasers and beams this is the order. These three is, I look for the halberd beam. If I can't find it, hold beam's still really good. If I can't find it, pike beam's really good. And then after that, I mean, I guess at least, you know, whatever. But these three are kind of in this order in terms of how good they are. Hold beam, like I said, it can still do massive damage if their shields are down. But I think having the, because uh, this doesn't have piercing. It does double damage on systemless rooms. But that doesn't mean it does two damage, you know. It does one damage times two on a systemless room. So it doesn't actually pierce any shields, which takes it down a little bit of a notch. But it's still A tier weapon. Beams, I'm telling you, are really good. So the fire beam is a bit different than the other beams. Um, and I've actually really come to like fire weapons uh, in my time playing. I used to be like, all right, I don't want to wait for their, them to burn up. <laughs> but they are really fun to just wreak havoc on enemy ships. Um, and I think it's it's not quite as like universal, especially against the flagship. Like It's good to have as a supplemental weapon um, and to start fires and cause chaos on their ship. But it's like it doesn't really do that much damage. It just kind of fucks with them. Um, so having said that, I think it's still good. I think it's a B tier for sure. Um, as you can see, I think beams are overall pretty good. Um, but it not doing any direct damage is a little bit of a hinder. The fires are awesome. And if you have a run that can work around it, it, it does really well. Um, but it doesn't hold up too well against the flagship, at least on its own. You know, you can do a run against other ships with like, you know, two ions and a fire beam totally, like most ships during the game. But if you go to the flagship with that, it's going to be a little harder to, to take away the dub. But it's still pretty good, and it can be used in conjunction with a bunch of other weapons to, to really have a, a good run going. Okay, speaking of, beam weapons are all really good. I think the anti-bio beam is pretty bad. Um, I don't think it's F tier. Honestly, it might be F tier. It's like, it's a cool concept, and it does work. It like melts enemy crew's HP. But it's just like, it's so niche. It's kind of, when I did my ship ranking on the slug, a i think that has it right it's just not that good it's kind of hard to use i mean it looks pretty cool i guess but it, it's just it can be used but i would never buy it you know i would use it on like as a default weapon on slug a right but i would never buy this weapon it, it's just not i don't think it's that good really it's bordering on f tier honestly as the list goes on i might move it it's a creative idea, and I'm glad they added stuff like this in Advanced Edition. I think, did they? Maybe this was in the base game, actually. I don't know. I never played the original. I only got it after Advanced Edition, but it's it's pretty wet. Like, whatever. All right, on to the bombs. Now, I think, in general, bomb and missile-based weapons are worse in a lot of ways just because they rely on ammo than, like, lasers, beams, ions, or flak. But there are some bombs I like. <clears throat> so let's go through it here. Small bomb, I'm going to honestly say is a is a B tier. I think this is one of the better bombs. <clears throat> Mostly because it costs one power, um, which is pretty cheap. So I would never have a run, you know, balanced around this. But I think for one power, especially late game, if you haven't been using missiles your whole run, you build up a shit ton of missiles. I'm sure you guys have noticed. Um, same with drone parts. So you can really, if you get this like sector five, six, seven, you can just tack it on to the end of like your build. And it, it's it's pretty good, honestly. You can just you can have it on auto fire at the flagship when you just don't need any more missiles, and you've got like 50 in the back, and just blow up their systems. And it can it can really do some good work if you have an extra one bar of weapon power that you can afford. I think it's pretty decent to toss on there. Um, it's not amazing, and I wouldn't you know consider like going out of my way to buy it necessarily. But if I got one and I didn't need to sell it, I'd probably hold on to it and try to use it. Uh, fire bomb, I feel pretty much the same way. Um, let me actually see here how much power. Yeah, this one costs two power, so it's a little bit less worth it. But I think the firebomb effects does a lot of the same. It just causes chaos on the enemy ship. And if you have like a really power, like 
burst laser mark two and a beam or like a flak already and you can tack this on i think it can also be pretty helpful just for like messing with the enemy ship and really making it hard for them to fix stuff um and this this is kind of the where's the fire beam they're both pretty good they kind of do the same thing um but i think the the fire bomb is is yeah, I think they're, they're pretty similar in terms of their, their usability. You can really use it as like a supplemental weapon to, to mess with the enemy. Healing Burst, I think, is really, really bad. I think it's an F tier. I mean, when you use it on the Slug B for its stupid-ass little, like, you know, meta strategy, it's war it's terrible. But even in general, like, all it does is it costs a missile to heal your, your crew, right? Other than the Slug B, every ship has a Med Bay or a Clone Bay. So they heal for literally free anyways. So why would you... Like, if you're doing a boarding run, I guess you could launch it into your into the enemy ship to heal your crew. But that's so situational. Like, you should never buy this. It's just... It's not... It's not going to help you win any runs, you know? So it's definitely never worth it. Ion Bomb, I think, is kind of bad, too. Um, as for Ion Weapons, I mean... It's like the worst one. Like any of any of these ion blasts or weapons down here are gonna do a better job than the ion bomb. This one costs ammo. Um and it's just like it doesn't do that much for you. The 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 joy of ion weapons is like shooting their shields with them and then using your other weapons to actually damage the ship. This just teleports inside and yeah, it can ion like their weapons, I guess, but it's not the worst weapon in the game, but it's just not really going to help you that much in most situations. So I don't think it's really something you never, ever need to pick up. Um, maybe, I mean, it, it costs one power, so if you have one, maybe you could use it on the flagship. You know, most of these weapons, like, you know, a small bomb, ion bomb, and then plenty of others on here. If you get them for free and you just don't need to sell it by the end of the game, you might as well tack it onto your run and just use it um, in a lot of situations. So, yeah. All right, we got the two breach bombs next. To be honest, did anyone know there were two different breach bombs? Um, they're they're pretty identical. Obviously, the breach bomb Mark II does like a little bit more damage, um, but it takes two power. So I think the breach bomb one is is kind of like the small bomb. It costs one power. Um, it can breach systems. Obviously, that's the point, and it it damages personnel and systems. So it's like okay, right? And only taking one power and nine seconds to charge is like pretty good. Breach Bomb Mark II, I think, is kind of worse just because it takes two power, and that means if it takes two power, it's kind of like you have to build your run about around it a little bit more. You can't just slap it on like these two here. So I think it's worse. I think it's probably D tier two. It's just not worth it. There's no reason to ever really... Yeah, there's enough said about this. It's just not nothing to write home about. Crystal Lockdown Bomb is like one of, one of the super most niche weapons in the game. I don't even know how you get it. Um, I know it starts on one of the ships, but I don't think you can even get it. Maybe in the crystal sector, which is, like, super secret, so, like, you'll never go there on a normal run. Um, I mean, it's just, all it does is lock the room down, so it's really not that good. It, it's, like, yeah, I don't know. It's it's kind of D-tier also. I guess it's useful in conjunction with some other stuff, but it's such a rare weapon, too. Like, you never get it unless you start as the, the Theseus, I think it is. Stun Bomb is much like the Ion Bomb. It's just kind of bad, you know, um, and it's actually worse because it only does like one ion damage, whereas I think the ion bomb does a little bit more. Um, yeah, the ion bomb does four ion damage. So the stun bomb is just like, yeah, the point is it stuns crew, but that's like, it's cool they added it in advanced edition, but it's just, bro, it, you don't, stunning is not a game breaking thing. So most of the bombs are unfortunately kind of bad. These ones are, are okay to tack onto runs definitely, but Oh, and then Repair Burst. It's kind of like the Healing Burst. It, it's D tier because it's a little better than the Healing Burst. Fixing your ship or systems is actually slightly more useful, definitely. But having to cost missiles and, like, I don't know. I, I just don't think it's really... I don't know. I don't think it's really that useful and you would use it ever. It doesn't do anything. Um... It's 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 just like a tool. It's not even a weapon, really. It's kind of like the the whole repair drone. That if you have it, I guess you can use it if you have extra missiles, uh, and you're not doing a missile run to just fix up some systems. But like it doesn't repair whole. It only does system damage. So it's like in battle you can repair your systems, which is like a very niche thing to to have going. So that's it for the bombs. Let's move on to the crystal weapons, which are like again really really rare. Um, so crystal burst one here. 
Uh, all the crystal weapons are pretty good, to be honest, because they pierce one layer of shield. So if you start as the crystal cruiser that has them, or uh, I think the rock crew, or the rock cruiser C has like this one, I think, heavy crystal. They're pretty good, but you never really get to use them that much unless you're playing those ships. So because they don't really appear in shops or anything. Um, I think the Crystal Burst 1 is honestly pretty good. It shoots two shots that pierce one layer of shield, so, like, that's just... They're like missiles early on. Like, literally, Sector 1 and 2, they're free missiles that shoot two at once. And they only take two power to charge. So, pretty good. <laughs> I mean, there's, there's really nothing to be said. It's pretty pretty damn good. Um, the Burst 2 is a little worse, just because it costs uh, three power. It does shoot three shots, but, like, three power for this is kind of insane. Um, again, it pierces shields, which is good. But I think for three power, that if it was two power, it's like a burst laser mark two, right? Which is amazing. But three power kind of takes it down a peg. And because of its rarity, it's like it, it, you don't even really need to know what tier this is in because you're never going to use it, really. I don't even... Can you even... Where do you even get this? Does any ship start with it? No. I think you can just buy it in crystal sectors. I don't think that like you can ever really get this weapon very often. Heavy Crystal 1 is like the Crystal Burst. Is it an A tier? I think it's kind of like a worse one. I think in general the Heavy Lasers, when compared to like Burst Lasers or, or whatever, are generally worse. Yeah, they do twice as much damage, but the catch is they shoot less projectiles, and generally lasers and laser weapons are like designed to have a, a spam of projectiles to take down shields, right, initially. So I think uh, it's a little worse, but it's still pretty decent. And again, because of the rarity, like... Bro, you're just never really going to use it. And then this one, the Heavy Laser Crystal 2. Um, just one shot at four damage, which is a lot of damage, and it pierces one shield. But, like, it's just the rarity is... I almost don't want to rank these, because, like, I... Other than playing the Crystal Ship, you never use these, but whatever. Okay, that's those done. So here we go with the Flak ones. Now, these are all going to be pretty high tier. Advanced Flak is only available on the Lanius B. However, it is like, it's like the best gun in the game, almost. <laughs> um, unfortunately, that's the only way you can get it, but it is really, really good. Um, there's not much to be said since it's such a niche thing, but it's just the flak one, but better. It costs one power, which is like insanely good. It shoots three projectiles, just like the flak one. And I think it charges even faster, uh, to be honest. Let's see, it charges uh, eight seconds and the regular one takes 10, yeah. So it's just a better one. It's kind of dumb to rank because you can't really use it unless you play one specific ship. But it is like the best weapon, right? Flak 1, the regular one, is going to follow as well. If you see this, always try to buy it. This is just like a game-winning item. It it takes down shields like nobody's fucking business. Um, it's pretty cheap too, money-wise and power-wise. It takes two power to shoot three projectiles, which is really good. Um, obviously, it takes down shields like, uh, you know, incredibly. But it also does decent damage after you take their shields down, after a couple volleys and maybe some beams, whatever. You can just have this thing on auto fire and just shattering their ship. So it's so good. Um, yeah, it, it's always always a purchase if you see it and you can afford it. It's gonna make your power the power level of your ship rise tremendously. Uh, Flak two. Gonna be honest, I don't think it's it's well, it's definitely not as good as the Flak one, despite being the second upgraded variant, right? Um, mostly because it takes three power and oops and takes like 21 seconds that's a lot of time to charge it's over double and it yeah um it's still definitely good though don't get me wrong but i would always buy similar to the glaive beam if i had this and i could buy a flak one in maybe not every situation but most of the time i will be selling this one because the power efficiency and shot speed of this one is is going to be way better for you than this one so flak two you know it's still good is it a tier or b tier I'm going to be honest, in my personal experience when I play, if I saw a Flak 2 and a Hole Beam, I would, I would pick the Hole Beam over the Flak 2. I, I genuinely would. Just because it's it's hard to use. It's not as hard to use as the Glade Beam or like the Vulcan, but I think it, you know, a B tier is still like good. I'm not going to complain seeing it, right? Or getting it. But I would not buy it over most of these weapons, right? Obviously, it depends. Like if I already have like two beam weapons i'm not gonna buy the whole beam over this right that's stupid but in general the kind of gist is i think the flak 2 is is actually substantially worse than the flak 1 while still being good so those are the flak weapons down um there's no artillery weapons on this but those are those don't really count as weapons anyway so whatever 
Ion Blast 1. Ion Blast 1 is an A tier weapon. Um, definitely, it costs one power and it shoots one ion um, pretty rapidly, honestly. Let's, let's see, what's the actual charge on this here? Um, it shoots one ion for one ion damage and it only takes one power for every eight seconds. So it's, it's awesome, you know? Um, it's kind of like the small bomb in uh, Breach Bomb here where you can just tack it onto a run with for one power and just have it on auto fire to just hurt their shields constantly and that's a really really good thing to have um i love this weapon you know and if you start with two of them like on the zoltan b you can ride that all the way that does so much ion damage um it's power efficient it does what it needs to do and it's just a, it's pretty much a free layer of shields on the enemy gone just at all times which is just awesome and look at this, you have this, right? That means the the flagship's down to three layers of shields because of this. This takes three layers down, boom, they have no shields. Just these two weapons. That's three power, incredibly efficient. You have any beam, any laser, anything else, that's a, that's a weapon set of boom, 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 you've won. All right, <clears throat> Ion Blast 2 is actually really, really good also. Um, in fact, it's insanely good, mostly because the charge time is absurdly low. It takes four seconds half the time of this generally with the type 2s like the flak here it takes like over twice as long nah this one takes half as long um now granted it takes three power which is kind of the catch of it i think this is honestly also an a tier weapon if you're going to go for ions this is the one you want to look out for this is good too as like a supplemental one but it, it's a little bit less of a hard carry this one you just have it on auto fire on their shields within like you know whatever uh, three volleys maybe four by the way which is only what like 12 to 16 seconds their shields are gone this thing shoots so fast it just can stack and take their shields down immediately this is a really good weapon um the three power is a little bit it's what keeps it out of s tier definitely but if you have this and you put a beam on like you can literally just have this in a beam like the halberd beam and, and you're good to go man uh, obviously i would still get more weapons than just those two but like you could definitely run that that setup there all right the heavy ion here I think it's it's okay. It's definitely not as good as these two, um, but it's still up there. I would say, um, you know, because it takes 13 seconds. So this is kind of like the uh, the uh, the counterpart of this. It takes a little bit longer to to shoot, but it's still okay. You know, um, taking two power is not that bad, um, but it, it doesn't stack really. So you need something else to take down shields. It, it, it's another you know like free layer of shields down, but. It's not quite as easy to use as the Ion Blast, but still pretty decent. Ion Stunner is kind of a weird one because it's the way I use it is not as a stun weapon, but pretty much as the exact same thing as the Ion Blast 1. Um, let's see, it takes 10 seconds, whereas the Ion Blast 1 takes 8 seconds, so it's a little worse. It does have the stun thing, um, but for that, I'm going to put it in A tier just because I don't use it for what it's really supposed to be to like stun enemies. Um, it's just maybe it's I mean, I can't really two seconds of charge time It does the exact same thing as the ion blast if for in my opinion You know, it's not gonna win any runs But it's just a free layer of shields for one power that you can throw on at the end of your run and just you know Do whatever they're, they're almost interchangeable All right charge ion I think is decent. I think I'm gonna put it in B tier as well um, I don't really run it or buy it, but if I get it maybe I'll use it um, if I have to Charging up three ions and shooting them all is pretty uh, pretty substantial ion damage to the enemy ships, I would say. Um, I think it takes kind of a lot of power, though. Yeah, it, well, two power is actually not that bad, yeah. Yeah, I, I think it's B tier is fair. It's decent. It's kind of like the heavy ion where these ones are just going to be slightly better for you most of the time. But if you have this, it, I mean, it does good ion damage, and you can you can get in there with a, a beam or a laser after that and do some serious, uh, serious damage to the enemy ship. So I don't think it's too bad. Chain Ion, I think, is a little worse. I don't know. It, it does stack, kind of, eventually. It's it's kind of like... It, it progressively does more Ion damage as you shoot it. Which is, like, good. But I think it's just... It's kind of a lot. And it takes three power, which... Makes it kind of inefficient. I think if you... You shouldn't ever really buy this. If you get it, maybe you could use it. You could build it in your run. But I think any other Ion weapon you would rather use of, of any of these up here. Um, Ion's like a pretty good status effect, pretty good like weapon type. I just think this one is like, it's a little bit not worth it um, in comparison to like any other weapon. And again, I know the game's based on RNG, so sometimes this is all you got, right? But I think you should really be on the lookout for these especially and, and maybe these two if you're gonna do an Ion build. 
All right, now we're getting to the good stuff, the lasers. Okay, so the basic laser is like bad, obviously, but that's kind of the point, kind of like the mini beam. You can't buy it anywhere, you can't get it anywhere, but it shoots one uh, laser. In most situations, it's like pretty useless, right? Because there's like a very few amount of ships that don't have shields, pretty much only like drones. So it can't do anything on its own at all, ever, really. Um, you know, the one exception is when you have the uh, uh, the Kestrel B has four of these, right? But I mean, that's like because you have four of them. That's not the gun itself. So I think it's it's probably the worst laser. But again, it's in, it's especially the same reason as the mini beam. It's designed to be kind of bad, but it can be used, you know, I guess in conjunction if you have extra power, whatever. Um, <clears throat> So the dual lasers is actually better than the burst laser one, I'm pretty sure. They're pretty pretty goddamn similar. Um, but the only difference is, like, this one costs one power. And this one costs two power, right? So other than that, they're pretty much the same. Um, this one also has a one second less cooldown time. So the dual lasers is just objectively better than the burst laser one, um, despite being similar. So I think... I don't think it's quite an A tier. Maybe it is. You know what? I think it is an A tier. I think it's pretty good. Two two laser shots can take down two layers of shields. Obviously, on its own, it's not that great. It's like actually pretty bad. But I mean, none of the weapons are designed to be used on their own. Um, and I think having this plus like one other laser weapon means like you have all their shields down or or whatever an ion weapon. You can do some damage with this early on. Might not carry you all the way to the late game. Obviously, the burst laser mark two is like way superior but it, early on it does pretty good work in conjunction with something else and it can be added on to a build to do some you know okay okay stuff and because of that this one's going a tier below it's just the worst one in every single way um, unfortunately so there's nothing really to be said burst laser mark 2 welcome to s tier this along with flak just best weapons in the game there's really just nothing to be said it costs the same amount of power as the burst laser 1 but shoots one more projectile, right? And it only takes one second longer to charge. It's, I don't wanna say it's unbalanced, but it is funny how it's like, why is this one so much better and like the same amount of powers as the burst laser one? But that's discussion for another day. This is just an amazing weapon. A ton of ships start with it. And if you play one of those ships, you you have an end game weapon from the first jump in the game, which is amazing. Um, it's just great at taking down shields. I mean, like, even you think about it, it shoots three lasers, assuming they all hit, that's like 75% of the enemy shields just down in one burst from one weapon that costs two power. So good. I don't even need to say anything else about this. Oh, if you see this in a store or the flak one, especially this though, always buy it. Always buy it. Sell your fucking life, bro. Sell your crew off to the slavers. Draw straws and, and fucking put this thing on. And burst laser mark three. Um, welcome to the club of B tier with Glaive Beam and Flak 2. It is quote unquote better than the Burst Laser Mark 2 because it shoots five lasers, right? Obviously. Well, not really because it takes four power to, to even work and it takes 19 seconds to charge. So yes, shooting five lasers is an insane amount and can get through all shields of all ships, right? Um, the power cost and I mean the charge time is not really that bad, but most of the power cost really just makes it so it's not nearly as efficient as the burst laser mark ii um it, it's it's a good weapon right but it's it's just it's not nearly worth it and especially because it's pretty expensive it costs 95 scrap like that's nothing to be to laugh at like that's a pretty sizable amount of scrap to drop on this thing plus you got to consider you got to upgrade four power slots and if you buy it, you're probably in the middle of your run, right? So you already got like probably two or three weapon slots already. So this is gonna cost you like 300, 400 scrap to just get online. That's insane, right? So it, it, because of that, it's really just kind of hard to use, but you know, it's cool. It is cool, I'll give it that. Um, but I, I would use it if I had space and I could make it work, but I would much rather have so much other stuff than it. Heavy laser one is kind of bad, honestly. Um, uh, it, the thing is it shoots one laser right and its thing is it does two damage so it's like it does more damage than something like the basic laser right so because of that it's got to be better than the basic laser i think but well honestly no it's in the same tier it's kind of the same as the basic laser like one laser blast 
is not taking you very far. It's not doing a whole lot for you, you know? To take down one layer of shields, slash, it might miss, and then you take down nothing, it's just, it's kind of, it's it's a basic laser that does damp twice as much damage if you hit. There's really nothing to be said. I mean, it takes 10 seconds, right? Which is the same as the basic laser. So, yes, it's better. But, I mean, at the end of the day, they're pretty similar. So, I don't think it's that great, really. Um, wait, holy shit. Am I stupid? Yeah, okay, never mind. I thought for a second it shot two, and I was like, wait, what? No, I'm stupid. Um, but it does, you know, it takes one power, so they're very similar weapons. Um, Heavy Pierce is, like, objectively better. Pierce is one layer of shield, but it's also um, a very niche weapon that's only available on the Rock B, I think. Um, so it's, you know, the same as, like, all these other ones, like the Advanced Flak. It's better in every single way, but it's a very niche, like, ship-exclusive weapon. So there's not much to be said about it. You'll probably never get it, or you will never get it unless you play Rock B. Heavy Laser 2, I think is... for It costs 3 power, man. I'm going to I'm gonna put it even with the Heavy Laser 1 um, uh, in the tier of, like, I wouldn't really go out of my way to use it, but in a pinch it would work. Because costing 3 power makes it worse than the Heavy Laser 1, right, compared to 1 power. But shooting two dam two shots that do two damage each is like bumps it back up. So they kind of balance it kind of balances out as the same level of that. Um, it's not the you know the worst weapon in the game. I would rather use it than any of these suckers, right? But it's just hard to use, and like the the value you get out of it is just not that good, right? Um, you're so much better off even using dual lasers than this. Like this thing costs what two power. One less power, it charges quicker. Yeah, it does less damage, but like, at least in my attempts for, for builds, the lasers and the flak aren't what do the damage. They do the shield taking down, and something else like a beam, or, I mean, usually a beam, <laughs> does the damage. And then after their shields are down, then they can come in and clean up the scraps and do the rest of the damage, right? And at that point, if their shields are down and you're going in for the kill, you don't need to do double damage with the heavy lasers. Like, they're, are, they're fucked, they're already done, right? Um, if they have no shields and so it's just you don't really need them now the whole lasers here i think i prefer to the heavy lasers um mostly because they shoot more uh the whole laser one takes two power and shoots two shots it's kind of like what the heavy laser wanted to be um i think it's a b tier weapon costing two power and doing two shots is pretty much the same as the dual lasers um the only catch is it takes way longer to charge, right? Let's see, it takes uh, 14 seconds, whereas the dual laser takes 10 seconds. It's not a massive difference, but in the heat of battle, those four seconds can make a difference. So I think it's just a tier below. Um, actually, no, you know what? I'm, I'm being stupid. There's no way it's a tier below. Is it an A tier? Now I'm kind of doubting myself. I don't know if to bring this down or to bring this up. I think I gotta bring this up. I think the whole laser is, is actually okay. The ability, it's like, it's pretty much the same as a dual laser. It takes a little bit longer to charge, but the catch is if you need to just do damage, you can go for their hole, and this can do four damage, which is like pretty good. So I actually think it's pretty decent. Yeah. Okay, I think, I think I'm happy with that. I think these two weapons are pretty decent. Um, again, not on their own, but in conjunction with other things, they can be used pretty, pretty effectively. And they can definitely be in the final boss fight, for sure. So the whole laser two here, um, Kind of suffers from the same problem as most like level two weapons. It takes three power to shoot one more shot. It's like a worse burst laser mark two or mark yeah. Um, it takes fifteen seconds. That's not that bad, I guess. But yeah, I think uh, I think it's gonna be B tier. It's kind of just worse than this. It it it's going in the tier with all of the leveled up weapons that are better, but not as worth it. Charge Laser Plus, this is another, like, signature one on the, uh, well, I don't even know what ship it's on. Let me see here. It's on the Stealth? Yeah, it's on the Stealth C. Okay, yeah, right. Well, let's do this one first, then. I think the Charge Laser is, like, a B-tier weapon. It can be used. Um, six seconds is pretty good, but, you know, if you charge it up, it can shoot two, so that's, like, good. Um... I don't know. I mean, th that ends up being like 12 seconds, so it's definitely like worse than these. It takes way more like, I mean, not way more. It takes a little bit more mental like focus to like get this going and like just attention to detail. I just think it's it's worse than this. 
Um, I'm not gonna put this one in A tier. Yes, it is better. It's just, but it's, dude. The ship you, the only ship you can use the charge laser plus on is a pretty garbage ship, as you saw from my last tier list video. So they're both going in B tier, just because they're, I see them mostly the same. Um, like the only advantage is this one has, only takes one power. But again, it's just a starting weapon for a certain ship, so whatever. Charge Laser 2, I think is kind of the same as like the Charge Laser 1 here. It actually takes like a little bit less to charge each shot and it shoots up to four, which is pretty decent. Um, but I think having it wait a total of, let's see, what so what does it say? It says five seconds. Yeah, so having to wait 20 seconds to fire four shots is not great. Considering the Burst Laser Mark 2 here, takes um, 12 seconds to shoot three. So if you do the math, this one is obviously better, but I think it's okay. You know, it can definitely be used. Like, I feel like I'm, I, I'm being too, it sounds too harsh on the B tier. The B tier is not that bad. I like all these weapons. These are all pretty decent weapons. Um, I just think it, it's, I don't know. It's, it's, it's one of the less good laser weapons. I would definitely say um, chain laser. I think chain laser is pretty decent. Actually, I, I kind of, Kind of, it's, I kind of sleep on it sometimes, you know? But if you really look at like the, the math and how it works, like going all the way to like a seven second cooldown to fire two shots is like pretty pretty good. Um, so I think it's an A tier weapon, honestly. Um, especially because you can just kind of like set it on something and have it auto fire to, to ramp up and then do some constant quick damage to them. I think it's pretty decent. It's, it's not as good as the Burst Laser Mark II or anything up here, but it, it's pretty good and it can be used in a run with some other stuff, an ion, a flak to, to really do some damage to ships. All right, Chain Vulcan is like the charge laser, but in this, <laughs> I should rename this tier like the better guns that are actually worse. Um, it's good, right? It does insane damage. Um, it gets all the way down to literally like one second, right? Which is insane. It just, it's a mini gun. It shoots so quickly, but it also takes four power. That's just so much power. It's so hard to use. Um, and honestly, if you're gonna have four power on something, I would just have the Glade Beam over this. Again, it's an RNG game, can't always pick, but I think the Glade Beam is gonna do you better for four power than this thing. I think, but it's good. I mean, it's like designed to be powerful, so I can't put it any lower than this. It's just really, really hard to use and get off the ground. All right, missile weapons are gonna be kind of the same as the bomb weapons, definitely. Um, a lot of the same reasons, they cost ammo which is makes them uh, kind of hard to use. But, so the Lido missiles here are a starting weapon for a couple of ships. Um, you, I mean, they're kind of the same as the Artemis, pretty much. Um, they take one power and they shoot a missile, right? Um, I will say the Lido takes less time to charge. So I think I'm gonna put it in C tier, and the Artemis in D tier. They're okay, right? The, what I will say, you know what? <sighs> no, nah, I mean, well, here's the thing, right? There's kind of a catch because the Artemis, like, well, I mean, the Lido is technically a starting weapon, so you can't actually get it from anywhere. Um, and the Artemis has two types. It's kind of, there's only one on this. You can't really tell the difference. Um, but the Artemis that starts on like the Kestrel and stuff costs one power. Any Artemis you buy, though, actually costs two power. So that actually makes it kind of worse. Like, the Artemis that you start with on the uh, Kestrel, if you get to the flagship and you still haven't sold it, you can tack it on much the same way as a small bomb. But buying an Artemis is not really that good of an idea because an actual one that you would buy from a store... Actually, wait, am I... I think I'm tripping completely here can't buy this either yeah okay well you can't buy either of these so i don't know there's like a variant that some other ships have that have two i'm just looking at the like the wiki here because these ones are they have like the, all these weird variants i don't think they're that good really is, is what i'm trying to get at you know early on whereas the bomb is like kind of useful they're kind of similar i guess but this is susceptible to drones and the flagship has drones for parts of it so it's just kind of a worse small bomb and you're probably you literally start with these two weapons for the most part so getting it like holding it on the entire run is just kind of you're probably not going to do that and i just don't think they're really that good um early on they help 
a lot of builds, right? Just taking their shields out, but having to rely on missiles is just never, never a good look. So it doesn't have the same kind of late game like usefulness as the B tier bombs up here that you can just throw in since defense drones are a thing. So that's why they're kind of both down here. The Pegasus is better. How, how much power does the Pegasus cost? Let's see here. Requires three power. Yeah, that's just not worth it, bro. The, the, the thing is it shoots two missiles for the cost of one, which is like good. But for three power, like, bro, you're not going to be using that, right? In my opinion, missile-based weapons, whether they're bombs or missiles, are only good at the start of the game when you have nothing else, um, and at the very end when you have no other use for your weapon slots. And you can toss them in and you have no use for your, your missiles uh, anymore, and you can just auto-fire them. Or not auto-fire necessarily, but just use them without having to worry about saving ammo. That's really the only time I think missiles are that good. Um, other than that, they're either too weak and shot down by defense drones like most of these, or way too power consumption-ish, so just not worth it. Um, but yeah, moving on to the Hermes here, this is the one that, this is just the standard, like, big missile. Um, does three damage, which is, like, good, but it takes three power. Again, D tier, like, so much power to use, like, a weapon with finite ammo. And defense drones just completely stop that. And a lot of ships had defense drones, to be honest. Plus the flagship's whole second phase. And you might say, well, first and third don't have defense drones, right? Yeah, sure. But I mean, like, if you if you rely on a missile for your strategy, that means you can't beat the second phase, really. So, I don't know. Breach missile, um, also, like, pretty much the exact same as the Hermes, just it causes breaches, but it costs three power again. It takes, like, a long-ass time to charge. Um, so I don't know. I don't. I think they're also pretty bad. The whole missile, I guess, is maybe the best one. It only does two damage, but it only takes two power. I'll put it in C tier because it's. I think it's slightly better than these, just in terms of it's a little bit more efficient to use, and it still does like two damage, right? Which is which is a uh, pretty good. Um, and it does double damage on systemless rooms. So you can do up to four damage for two power, so it's a little better, but it has all the same problems. And then the Swarm Missile, I think, is honestly the best missile weapon, mostly because it shoots three missiles for one power, right? Um, and it only costs two power. Or three missiles for one missile resource, and it only costs two power, which is not that bad. So I think this can be used a little bit more commonly uh, on builds to kind of toss in. You know, it's not as accessible as an Ion Blast or a Small Bomb, but... It can still be used to, like, three missiles is not a joke. That'll that'll ruin some systems for sure. If you go for the shields, you can do some serious damage to enemy shields right away. Um, unfortunately, the pre-igniter, I'm pretty sure, does uh, does not fully charge it. But, you know, still pretty good. So, yeah, that's my uh, weapon tier list. You guys probably disagree with some of it. Um, especially, I, I'm already ready for people saying, like, Bro, what the hell? You put Glaive Beam, Burst Laser, Chain Vulcan, and B tier? What the? Those weapons are fire. I, I totally agree they're good. I just think if you really sit back and like try to use them, it's going to be more worth your time to use a Halberd Beam over a Glaive Beam, a Burst Laser Mark II over Burst Laser Mark III, um, a Flak one over a Flak II. I would still use them if I had them, but yeah. So that's pretty much my list. Um, looking at it, is there anything I want to change? I think I'm pretty okay with it. Um, the Crystal Weapons are kind of like finicky since they're so, so niche, but... Yeah, healing burst, so garbage. All right, well, let me uh, know. Let me know what you thought of the list, and I don't think there's really any other <laughs> tier list for FDL to be made, which is a bummer. But yeah, that was it. Uh, thank you guys for watching. See ya.